Now let's go time. Ready? Well, we did it. We have officially left Puerto Penasco. It is in our wake. I mean, I can still see the buildings, but it's a mile behind us. So we are on our way to Santa Rosalia, which is one of our favorite towns in Baja, California. Um, it is 250 miles approximately in a very straight line. We should be able to sail a pretty straight line on the rum line because it's supposed to be downwind the whole way. But currently, there pretty much is no wind, so we are motoring. And the engine sat for six months, basically. Uh, maybe five. It'd be good to get it through its paces, make sure she's solid. I'm pretty sure she is. We're not too concerned about it. But it's always nice to, you know, run something for a little bit once it's sat for a while. But it's a beautiful, nice, calm, no swell, really. Okay. We wish we had 10, 15 knots of wind instead of like four. We chose this day to leave because we knew it would be a nice, calm day. Um, first sail in a while. We just redid all the standing rigging. Didn't want to go out there in like 25, you know. Ease into this cruising life. This is supposed to be fun. This will actually be our longest passage we've ever done. I think this is gonna take us like 60 something. Um, unless we motor the whole way at five, then we'll get there sooner. We got a few lines finished tidying up. And then I think we're gonna just settle in, get comfortable and enjoy the ride. I just seen a whale tail. <laughs> oh, it feels so good to be back. <laughs> Holy cow. Whales, dolphins, the boobies, everything's back. We're just sitting here casually doing nothing, hiding from the wind under a dodger because it's actually kind of cold out here. Sailing along at five, five and a half knots, nice little gentle breeze. And all here, suddenly we hear this We're like, what the heck? It scares the crap out of us. This well breached like, what, 50 feet from our boat? Didn't even give us any warning, just came right up right next to us. Boat and a half length away. Big old, big old fin well. Oh, there's something coming towards us too out there. Seventh or eighth well I think we've seen in the two and a half, three hours since we left Penasco. Yeah, there's a lot of them out. There are a lot right now. They're all kind of headed north at the moment. It is nice to see the wildlife. We've seen some dolphins as we headed out. We think that's always good luck. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but that's what we believe. So that's, that's our truth, I guess. But it is kind of chilly. Like we're freezing. Hoodies on. Jessica's got a beanie on. We are gonna keep headed south till the butter melts. <laughs> till the butter melts. <laughs> and then we'll sit there for a minute and contemplate our life decisions <laughs> while the butter is melting. <laughs> oh, it's so cold. It's not as cold as it was when we left San Diego. 
two years ago. You remember that? It was 32 degrees Fahrenheit when we left. It's not that cold, but <laughs> it's cold. I'm in a beanie. It's the wind. The wind is cold. If it'd go away, it'd be beautiful. Do you think the whales will mistake our shiny new bottom as their potential mate? I hope not. That could be scary. <laughs> I'm so funny. It's now seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, we ended up motoring most of the night because the wind pretty much died and swell was still here. So the main sail was just like flogging back and forth and very loud and uncomfortable. So we started the engine up. We are now back under sail power though. For a little while we're making four and a half knots um, downwind. Swell is much more comfortable. Now that we have a little bit of wind to push us, keep the sails full. It was a beautiful sunrise. Um, as usual, Jessica was a trooper last night. I think she took watch from 1.30 to about 7. Um, which is great, I got some good sleep. Just gonna try to let her sleep as long as she can this morning. And we will see what day two brings. It is beautiful out. There's nothing better than a sunrise to see. Lows at nine, highs at four. Four a.m. So we're gonna be going through that in a rising tide against the wind. Need a pinch point. <laughs> it might be a rough night. How long will it be in the channel? Like a couple hours, probably. And then it opens up again. It's gonna through get that steep. little section. Yeah. Because it's an eight-foot tide. In Bay of LA, it's an eight-foot swing. As we head south, the wind from the north is pushing the wave south towards the pinch point between the islands. As this is happening, the tide will change and begin pushing the currents north. This combination is making the waves very steep and close together. Although it isn't going to be extremely dangerous, it is going to require constant attention and not to mention the pounding this does to us and the boat. It's just hard on everything. Well, the night is just evolving into a, a little bit of a mess. <laughs> Nothing that we can't handle, but we just waited too long to reef. So what happens when you are late to reef? You are struggling to get reef. We started seeing about nine, almost 10 knots of speed, boat speed. The swell and the wind is starting to pick up. We're probably seeing 20, 20 knots say maybe 25. maybe 25 we should have known better being up and down here as much as we have we will be sitting out here for the next uh, 10 miles as we get through this little cut that could potentially make our night a little more exciting and then we'll be through it and we'll be open waters again and hopefully in Santa Rosalia by uh, you know, noon those nine knots helped. <laughs> A couple hours of nine knots. <laughs> nine knots definitely helped our ETA in Santa Rosalia. Um, the problem going on, like Jessica said, is the sea is coming down to this pinch point. We are getting from like 80 miles wide to like 30. And then it even gets worse than that. There's islands in here. And now we're going through a point that's only five miles wide. And we're pretty sure the seas are going to build and build and build until we get through this. And the minute we get through it, the sea is 80 miles wide again, and this stuff should calm down. Hopefully we don't get our butts handed to us going through this thing. And of course, it's nighttime. The only good thing is, it is going to be a slack tide when we get there. Um, so we won't have any current going against us, which will be good. Oh, 
sun's out. It's always better when the sun's out. That actually was a very, very long night. We got through that little cut just fine. Um, the minute we came around the other island though, we got sliced white by some pretty heavy winds. Rail was in the water. Um, we're going to pair that. And it's just been rolling. There's some big rollers out here. We've got two reefs in our main and no head still up. Kind of crazy watching everything lay down and it figures you know the last 20 miles all of that craziness we endured last night was for nothing <laughs> and now we slowed down to like three and four knots instead of our five six seven eight nine <laughs> i found myself last night getting out and well the first time i came to shift <laughs> I was standing at the companionway looking out. The waves were break curling above the Bemini. And I thought, oh my gosh. All right, this is gonna be fun. Right on our tail, clear up there. There's gotta be something I need to do with the sails. Windows, all these new lines are creaking and groaning. And I, I didn't know where to go first, so I just sat here and watched, took it all in. I watched the waves, I watched the angry sea like churning and all of a sudden I realized that it had a pattern and it was a, a rhythm. And once I realized that the boat was working with that and the rhythm, I realized I didn't need to do anything with the lines. I didn't need to set the sails or anything. It was just not in danger. She was just managing. I didn't need to slow it down, doing what we were supposed to be doing. So, but still, huh, that was some rocking and rolling last night. Fast. It's nice. <laughs> Almost to the marina, we're three miles out. And of course the wind never let off anymore. I think it's getting stronger. We're now back into our double reef. Still cruising five and a half, six knots. And now we gotta try to dock this thing. A little bit nervous. We have a plan, hopefully it all works out. What better way to test out your new rigging than to fly? At least that's what it felt sometimes. Our overall stats were 255 miles traveled. Our average speed was five knots and our max speed was 11. We motored six and a half hours and sailed the other 44 and a half hours. The trip was fast and relatively smooth and Haraya felt dialed in. It is the longest sail we've done at one time. It felt a little dawning before we began and we had plans to duck into a number of anchorages if we wanted to. But as soon as we left the dock and found open water, our attitudes were instantly adjusted and we continued on. We would have kept going, but we just couldn't pass up our favorite city. We arrived in Santa Rosalia to the greetings of the staff that remembered us from the first time we were here. After lots of hugs and greetings, we settled in for a lovely full meal and precious still sleep. enjoyed this episode thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the adventures a very special thanks to our patrons who help keep the creative juices flowing see you next time